By means of printing, the fund of knowledge accumulated through the ages is available to everyone, rich and poor alike. Printing is essential to all education. All the other arts rely on it. Religious movements depend on it. Business could not function without it, nor could government. Instead of the printing press, of course, we have the internet. And the internet doesn't just let us distribute text to a zillion people, it lets a zillion people distribute text. And that's another leap. That's not just, oh, we're getting another renaissance. That's, that's totally different than what anybody who was rooted in the old paradigm could see. And we started looking at this and saying, wow, something new is happening. Something that we began calling Web 2.0. What's really fascinating about the world today is that the applications that matter are harnessing collective intelligence. Right, so what does it mean? What we're seeing now is that more of what makes for human welfare depends on information, knowledge, and culture. And social production and peer production is beginning to produce the inputs we need. Software, textbooks, publishing. The impossible happened with Wikipedia in our very field of education. People came on, they're free to edit, anyone can edit, anything. And what are these people getting out of it? I don't understand. Why, why would they do this? They're not getting any marks. No university credits. Why would people construct knowledge on that basis? And, and the Wiki is, is, is more popular now than the New York Times. People are going to the encyclopedia, like that. Then we have a discussion about the quality of the knowledge. Now, I don't know about you as an educator. Are you against discussions about quality of knowledge? <laughs> there are 80,000 new blogs a day. The public is engaging in a level of writing and, and uh, a political thought and opinion building like we've never seen before. Where are our students in that? They're filling in exam books. Google is adding major libraries to its database, expanding the reach of the web, 15 million volumes to be put in form that can be easily searched. Finally, the Library of Congress is going to be at everybody's fingertips, and Google is really driving the way. So it's really, really cool. Everything, all the creative output of humankind now can be in computers. And then one of the things that Berners-Lee said is, you know, you could have a lot of links, right? You don't have to have just a few links, you could have a whole lot of links. Google's initial insight was, was to do link analysis and not just to analyze documents. And every time one of us makes a link out there on the World Wide Web, we are, con we are contributing. If you've got enough links, you don't need the hierarchy anymore. There is no shelf, there is no file system. The links alone are enough. Delicious, same thing, you know, user activity builds the application. They will come to outpace professional categorization schemes, particularly with regards to, to robustness and cost. This is happening in all areas of information, knowledge, and cultural production. Yeah, we're, just, we're just beginning to recognize the implications, and we may need to seriously rethink the university and its future. Information technologies double their capacity, price performance, bandwidth every year. And a lot of people, when they think about the future, think about it linearly. I'm using today's tools at today's pace of progress and, and fail to take into consideration this exponential growth. We have escaped a previous box. We don't know where we are. It, it's gone so far that we've sort of forgotten that it really requires the commons to come up with some of this stuff. It's in the university. It's the university culture is focused on what we do in the classroom, how it ends up on the exam booklet, what I get published in a journal. And 
And that way we're missing the boat. And I, I think the formal education systems just haven't even begun to catch up, uh, you know, with the new processes. Because the critical thing that is happening is the public is, is existing now, is, is living and breathing within a much larger sphere of information and knowledge. And that that critical openness to knowledge is something that our work had better address. Uh, or we are ill-serving our students. And the whole idea is if, if I get through this talk and you sort of say, yeah, wow, you know, I've heard hype before, but that's a pretty big claim. But, you know, it actually might kind of work. Um, what I'm hoping is a few of you guys wake up and tomorrow morning and say, wow, I don't know, maybe that really is true. What would the world be like? Do I want to be part of that? And you just turn your careers just five degrees.